The following program is an original production of WICC PBS Chicago. Closed captioning for the professors is provided in part by the Clifford Law Offices, a personal injury and wrongful death law firm in Chicago. When you taste a piece of apple pie, do you ever stop to think about the chemical reactions going on inside of your mouth? Or do you ever wonder about the mysteries of enzymatic action in food? Probably not. But two science professors at Truman College do think about things like that. And they are here to talk about chemistry through food on today's edition of The Professors. Joining us today to talk about chemistry through food are Joy Walker, chair of the physical science department at Truman College, and Charlie Abrams, a chemistry professor at Truman College. And also joining us will be three students from Truman College. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. So I'm very excited about all of this. This is the first for me uh, and the professors. So I know you guys are going to start, and we're going to make some food today, yes. which I, uh, I'm excited about eating. Uh, Great. And so why don't you explain us what's going on? Sure. We start this experiment in basic chemistry, uh, talking, you know, in basic chemistry, we right away need to talk about matter. That's everything that is. So do you remember your three states of matter? Uh, I do. Uh, liquid. Solid and gas, correct? Excellent, beautiful. Right. But then someone comes along with a question like, what is smoke? And you scratch your head a little bit, or what is clay? Mm -hmm. Or something like that, what is whipped cream? So we have to talk a little bit more about uh, when you combine states of matter together, and we, dem we demonstrate this through making some chocolate mousse. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to warm up water and chocolate. That's all it takes, just water and chocolate. And I've got some chocolate that I'm dumping in here. And my uh, assistant is Vic Speedwell, who was a student of mine a couple years ago and is now a student of Professor Abrams. And I'm very pleased to have her help. So we're going to melt some chocolate. And as we melt it, we're making a mixture of water and um, fats and oils that are in the chocolate. So, Professor Abrams, you want to talk to us a little bit about what we're, chemicals we're mixing here? Well, um, I remember in class once talking about uh, pure materials, and I talked about chocolate as being a very impure from a chemistry point of view, and that, that got a student very upset. Don't talk about my chocolate, she yeah, said. I would have been upset uh, also. That's right, that, so. because, uh, well, chocolate is definitely many, many chemicals, and uh, so, here it looks like a solid, and if, I'm sure if you looked at it under a microscope, you'd see a lot more than just a pure single material. So while Joy is melting it, and uh, it's really mixing also with the water, which is really the purest thing in that whole mixture right there is the water. Very interesting. So, um, and this is going to take a little bit of time. So what okay. we're going to do is actually fast forward ahead and talk to you about the next steps. So what we would do is once we melt this in class and they work in groups, we have everyone come along and um, whip it up. And the whipping is really a team building activity because people, let's show how we might do that because this is going to take a long time. So this so is, this, this is going to be ahead. chocolate mousse you said, correct? Right. So we start just, by okay. just melting the chocolate in the water. That's going to take a long time. So we're going to fast forward and just show you the results. And so we'll, we then would move this here and we would start whipping it up. And surprisingly enough, what you end up with is a foam. Oh. And a foam is a kind of colloid where the gas is spread in this emulsion. It's spread and it gets very light and so very tasty. You, ha you have to cool it to create the, the foam, correct? Right, right. Okay. You have to cool it and whip it. Okay. And what happens is groups of students do this together and they get very excited. Oh. It gets to be almost like a contest, which table is sure. going to have their mousse done first. And when you're oh. done, you end up with a one chocolate bar that like feeds an entire class. Oh, wow. And it's very tasty. Now, see, I have to say something about this. You know, I would have been excited too. My class, I, I must have studied the wrong thing in school <laughs> because I studied political science and we never did anything fun like this. So I, <laughs> I wish I could go back now, you know? <laughs> This well, is great. You actually, you know, we developed a lot of these demonstrations mm -hmm. as part of our classes um, just to teach the chemistry to make it more engaging. But then we uh, decided that we had so many 
interesting demonstrations about food that we started a whole separate course in a continuing ed uh, program called Chemistry Through Food. Oh, so wow. we had an opportunity at Truman College every so often when we offer this for someone to come in as just uh, interested in a course mm -hmm. and say, I'd like to take something where each week I'm learning about chemistry, but really through food, very engaging. And so you get to do all of the cool experiments and demonstrations mm -hmm. that we've developed to teach all sorts of other chemistry, and we put them in the context of chemistry through food. And the most exciting thing is you get to eat them afterwards. That's right. Some of them you do. Okay. One of the ones I'm going to do later, we're not going to eat. But uh, <laughs> that's right. Some of them you do. We can uh, talk a lot about measurement, too. And we can talk about measuring in the regular system, like a half cup, but we can also talk about measuring in the metric system, like in milliliters. So what Vic has just done is she's mixed two ingredients to make some cheese. She's mixed a quart of milk with a cup of buttermilk. And we then can take the temperature of this mixture and get an idea of how warm it is, okay? And you have to warm it up all the way to uh, about 125 degrees centigrade. So that's uh, quite warm. And, well, no, that's 125 degrees Fahrenheit, which is actually, there we go, 125, about 75 degrees Celsius. 175 Fahrenheit, 75 Celsius. And we can have the students make those kinds of conversions and while they're watching everything warm up. Then go ahead and cut our lemon apart. So lemon is a source of acid. And what's going to happen is this mixture is homogenized. Homogenized means that there's fat particles all distributed through the mm -hmm. liquid. And it's completely even. But when we add acid to this mixture, what we plan to do is sort of like take a colloid in reverse, mm. take it back to its gas-solid liquid, except wow. we're only talking about the solid and the liquid. And the solid is going to be the curds, mm -hmm. and the liquid is the whey. Gotcha. Then what we can do is filter <laughs> and get the mm -hmm. uh, curds, collect it, and throw away the whey. Gotcha. Right? The and what we'll then be able to, this is cheesecloth, which we can use for the filtering. And um, so <laughs> that's the, uh, the curds and whey. The, uh, right. So Little Miss Muffet, was it? Yeah. Yes, Little okay, gotcha, yeah. yes, yeah. Right, wonderful. So what we'll be doing then is when this is warm enough and we've added the lemon juice, we'll be filtering it through this. Now filtration is something that is important in chemistry okay. because filtration is one way that you separate out uh, mixtures. And so this is a fun way to do a filtration, as opposed to your filter paper mm -hmm. and your very, um, your, your um, what do you want to call them, ring stands and, and funnels. We can just filter with things they're very used to, like colanders and cheesecloth. Okay. Okay? So let's see how our temperature's doing here. How are we here? Can you, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a little cold still, so maybe you could get some things set up while we're waiting for this and talk about what you're going to do, and we'll come back and, and break this coagulation. Okay. In a uh, well, uh, I took sort of a different tack. Uh, okay. We're not going to be preparing foods, but just analyzing the foods. Um, well, I, you know what? I, I'm sorry. If you can't make any food, then you're oh. going to have to leave. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we'll make it interesting for you, okay. though. For example, the two things I'm going to show you are how we can measure the amount of calories in a snack food. Uh, and we're going to do that pretty much with chemicals and things that you can find in the okay. house. Uh, although it's really uh, nice to do in the laboratory for our students because they learn how to design an experiment. And then the other one we're going to do is a very sophisticated experiment that I've done with the, the students who are here, and that is to try and figure out the source of honey. So, you know, mm -hmm. I have here some uh, clover honey, okay. uh, but it turns out that many places might label something as clover honey. It might not be. So how would you know if it's actually clover honey? And there's a chemical way of doing that that's very sophisticated we're going to demonstrate, too. Good. Um, so I wonder if I could first bring up uh, Peter Sullivan, one of my students, and he's going to bring our ring stand, which isn't much of an apparatus, but it'll let us set up for the next uh, experiment. If you want to put it right here, and let's put it uh, this way. So, okay. So really, the ring stand isn't very sophisticated, but it's going to allow us to hold everything in place. And let me bring up uh, uh, Thea McMillan, and uh, we're going to use that one for the honey analysis. But why don't you guys both come up here so that we can do the... Yes, um, come join the party. Yeah, come on in. Peter, um, Peter's going to start out by showing us really how we measure 
the amount of water that we're going to use for this experiment. The, the experiment is with a snack food, we want to find out how, much, how many calories. Okay. Well, calories is energy, and the energy, we normally eat it and we convert it into carbon dioxide and energy, and that's fine for us. But what we're going to do is convert it into carbon dioxide by burning the Cheeto. Oh, and so, okay, we're burning Cheetos. We're going to burn a Cheeto. All right, you heard that, folks, we're burning a Cheeto today. So you asked me earlier if there's going to be any flames. This is going to be the flame. Okay. Uh, we're going to use the heat from that Cheeto to warm up the water. So we have to know how much water we're putting in, mm -hmm. what its temperature is before we start, and then we're going to light the Cheeto and see the temperature change and know okay. what the temperature is afterwards. Awesome. All right, so actually the first step, Peter, um, and we have our balance right here. Is it Peter or, or Thea is going to be doing it first? Okay, Thea, you're in charge now of <laughs> weighing, please, just about 100 grams of water. Now, we shouldn't try this at home, right? Well, my, my kids, we have a lot of Cheetos in my house. I have three kids, and we like, so I shouldn't try burning the Cheeto at home. I correct? think once you see this Cheeto burning, you're going to realize uh, that you really <laughs> shouldn't try Cheetos. to burn it. Yeah, just, yeah. And they it, shouldn't it, be eating them either then, obviously. Yeah. Well, it's, it's going to give you quite a bit yeah. of uh, heat out yeah, of one, okay. just one Cheeto. Okay. So, yeah, I would uh, be okay. careful not to do this at home. Um, okay. So we have, we have a little bit more, and she's, I don't know if the camera can pick up the, the digital balance there. But she's got a little bit more than 100. We want it to be, just for ease of calculations, we'd like to have it to be 100 grams. Almost right on. Um, you can do right. it. Try a little bit more. All righty. Well, try the squirt bottle. We'll get it right back up there. And the, the reason we'd want it to be exactly 100 uh, grams is that will make the calculation really easy. In fact, what we're going to try and impress you with is we're going to collect the data here, and then the three of my students are going to do the calculation of how many calories all in our head, right? Gotcha. Well, I'm impressed already, just so that you know. All right. Okay, okay so uh, Thea, if you could hang sure. the can of water on the lower ring stand there. All right. All right, so we have right now 100 grams of water in that can. And to measure its temperature, we need to put in, this is just a digital okay. thermometer. So Thea, if you could put that in. And I have, uh, I, th I think that your crew has set this thing up really wonderfully. I have a, a computer connected to all of this so we can collect the data for the temperature while we're doing the experiment. And uh, so we're going to hope that we can show sometimes this scene and sometimes the actual data. So we just put the thermometer in and we see that the temperature right now, according to my computer, is about... 16, because it's a little bit chilly in here, that's 16 degrees C. So we now have water at a steady temperature, and the next step, I think, is, uh, is that Peter's job. Peter, uh, come on over and weigh the mass of one Cheeto. Okay. And look at that. That's exactly one it gram. Came, <laughs> it's, it comes, let's see if we can see it. Uh, one gram. Now, we secretly went through the bag of Cheetos yeah, and found the right one that Cheeto. Was, so you cheated. We, we cheated a little okay. bit because, again, having 100 grams of water there and exactly one gram of Cheeto there will allow us to do the calculation gotcha. in our head. Makes sense. So um, Peter uh, earlier made this little Cheeto twisted thing. piece of wire, which is a paper clip, and we call it the, the Cheeto 2000 because uh, <laughs> that's just our way of mounting the Cheeto so that we can burn it right underneath wow. the can. So let's see if it's going to work there. Yeah, I think there it'll work. Wow. And yeah, make it as straight up as possible because we want to make sure as much of the heat from that burning Cheeto as possible is going to go into the water so we can measure the temperature change. And so we're, we're heating the water in the can through the burning Cheeto. That's right. Okay. And the amount of energy, I don't want this to tip over, that's when we could get problems. But okay. the amount of energy <laughs> or calories. problems with those burning Cheetos all over the this, table. So this would be, be the careful. first and last professors on chemistry <laughs> if that happened. So what we want to make sure though is as much of the energy from that Cheeto gets into the water as possible, and then we'll know okay. the amount of calories. But we're going to discuss whether this is going to work really well. So now I'm going to have Peter. He's been dying to do this all day. He's going to okay. light the Cheeto. <laughs> that is cool. We have safety goggles if you want them. Oh. Oh. It's all right, late here we now, go. Huh? So I hope you guys are getting a nice close-up okay, step back of the Cheeto. It's not going to be that bad. Okay. All right. That's okay, we have ignition. All righty. All right. So. Um, Wow. 
So this is, yeah, you I know, how I, long do you think a Cheeto would take to burn? I, you would imagine just a couple seconds, right? <laughs> Actually, I actually don't want my kids watching this because they, try, they will try this at home. So I'm gonna, if we have a tape, we're gonna fast forward this part. And uh, oh, is that right? Yes. Well, we're starting now on the graph to see the temperature rise. No surprise there, and it's starting to rise pretty rapidly. It started out at 16 degrees, and now you can see because of the um, just the airflow in the room. Uh, a lot of that heat is right, not so making it to gotcha. heat the can, which gotcha. is fine. We might even have a chance to try this experiment again. Okay, cool. But, <laughs> but in that case, okay, there goes the Cheeto. So we have heated up the water. Oops, there's a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So how much yeah. did the temperature rise? All right, well, so far, it's gone up actually only two degrees, which is not a whole lot. I gotcha. think we lost quite a bit of energy. You saw that flame yeah, not was. really right underneath there. Yeah. So, well, let's see. Now we're about two. Yeah, uh, we were at 16 degrees when we started. And I hope you'll be able to see this on, uh, if we switch to the view of my computer, because we had started at 16 degrees, and we're up to just about 18 degrees. It's okay. leveling off now. Okay, okay. Leveling off. And what, what, are we, what are we hoping for? What, well, what are we going for? Uh, Peter, do you remember how many <coughs> calories are supposed to be in one gram of Cheeto, according to the package? It was 5.6. 5.6 yeah. calories. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now um, we heated up 100 grams of water by, let's just say, 2.2 degrees. All right. So how many millicalories is that? 100 grams of water by 2.2 degrees. 2,200. That's 2,200 millicalories. Now, okay. we use the term millicalories because in chemistry, the word calories is 1,000 times smaller okay. than the calories that you see on a package. Oh, okay. So when he says he measured 2,200 calories, that sounds like a heck of a lot of calories for one Cheeto, but it's right. really 1,000th uh, as many. So, so, so you're telling me that, the, that, which you're not telling me, but I'm going to interpret it this way, that the calories on the Cheeto actually are a lot less than I actually think. So when I eat Cheetos, <laughs> I don't have to feel so bad about it. Well, you know, Ted, I wish that was true. Oh, okay. But the fact is that um, what we measured then is that one Cheeto put in 2.2 food calories okay. into, the, into the can of water. Gotcha. Uh, and that was uh, one gram of Cheeto, 2.2. So we're not quite at what the package says. Okay. So then the question is, well, why not? <clears throat> what did, we, did we do anything wrong? And I think we could see pretty clearly as this experiment was going, because the wind was blowing a certain way, mm -hmm. a lot of that flame wasn't really hitting the can of water. So any of that heat that didn't go into warming the can of water, we're not measuring what the temperature change is there. And there's still some Cheeto left, actually. So we might have to weigh the amount of Cheeto left and say, well, we can't count any part of the Cheeto that we didn't eat as part of the calories. And there's a lot of other things that you can do much more sophisticated than this to really measure how much heat is in a Cheeto. For example, um, you can put the Cheeto, grind it up into a little powder, okay. and put it into a calorimeter, it's called, with a lot of oxygen. Mm -hmm. You know, oxygen supports combustion. So if we put the Cheeto in with oxygen and seal it up and make sure all of that heat energy goes into water, then we can more accurately measure how much calories are in a Cheeto. But we did the experiment once. We got a pretty good number sort of on the same range, 2.2 calories versus a little over 5 calories. So we could run it again, and we asked students then to redesign the experiment, for example, put okay. some aluminum foil around it to prevent the heat going other ways. Gotcha. So that was our first experiment. Well, that makes sense. That's, that's very good. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that's uh, very, very good. Now that we've done with that, I think it's time for me to turn it back to uh, Joy Walker, who's got her cheese almost ready Let, to go. Let's check on our cheese. All right. So it's just beginning to get up to the temperature range. We need it to be right around just under 75 um, Fahrenheit. So you don't want to boil it. You just want it to be very warm. And then I think you can go ahead and add the um, lemon juice. And so it's, it's the, the, the acid that we're looking for a reaction from. Yeah, and come on over sure. so you can see what's happening because this is pretty exciting. So right away, there's a huge change in the there is, texture. Yeah, yeah. For those of you you can't see it, it looks like it, 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 it's uh, it's what it, it looks like. It looks like the milk is spoiled, basically. Yeah. is what it reminds me of. Right, right. The acid has caused this um, solid part of the mixture to separate from the liquid part mm -hmm. of the mixture. Right. 
Yeah, they, I think they have a camera from above. Hopefully, we'll be able to sure. show everyone. You know, um, it takes a little bit of time for the curds and whey to sort of uh, complete their separation. Sure. We're going to rush it a little bit because we're just going to demonstrate the idea. This can be done at home. There's no fire in okay. this, okay? <laughs> so you, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to um, pour some, some, of this, <clears throat> some of this out here into our cheesecloth. And just go a little slow because it can splash. There you go. That's beautiful. Looks delicious. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, slow down because we got to catch it all in here. We don't want it to overflow. I think well, we're good. Know, go the, ahead. The protein that she's separating there mm -hmm. is called casein. And um, there's really a good reason why it's dissolved in or a part of the milk when it comes out of the cow and now it turns into a solid. And that is, okay. it's very easy or a lot easier for a cow or an infant to swallow liquid. So they swallow the liquid milk. But it's harder for the cow or the infant to, to digest a liquid. It's easier for digesting a solid. Sure. So in fact, when that milk gets into the stomach acid, it turns into this solid, ah. and that makes it easier to digest. And the, the uh -huh. protein, casein, is specifically designed to provide all those nutrients as well as be a liquid when it comes out of the mother and turn into a solid when it gets into the child's or calf's stomach. Wow. So what which I'm is, doing... Which is why it kind of, I don't know if you were going to say this, but it kind of looks like spit up when she was just doing that there. And that's, I, I wasn't, but I'm glad you did. Well, there I, you go. I, was, I was thinking I, that. So. I'll be the one that says okay. it. And, and, and because that's very much the same reaction. The, wow. The cheese, or the, at least the curds, are forming because the acid in the stomach. So that's what I'm doing now is I'm just tying it up. And then I'm going to tie it onto a spoon like this so that it can hang for a while. And this is something that you know, takes some patience because it's not going to be done right away. But you can leave it to sit for a while. And what I did is I made some of this last night. And so now uh, Vic is going to demonstrate the next step with this prepared. So once this has been sitting for a couple hours, we would then open it up, put it into a bowl like this. And, and she's turning it out onto a plate. Presentation is everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you add a little bit of herbs to it, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Uh, how do you make it? Just lift mm -hmm. off the lid. It's a trick there. There you go. A little grinder there. Beautiful. And then if you wish, it, you could drizzle a little olive oil on top. All right. And then after the class has discussed all the chemistry and been through this whole process, we're ready to awesome. eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm the guinea pig today, right? You're the guinea okay, pig Okay, great. Today. All right, well, here we go. Let's see how we're doing here. Very good, actually. All right. It's very good. Great. I wouldn't have expected that. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look good when we were making it, but it actually tastes. It's, it's, it's I, I guess I didn't help uh, in describing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we have one more experiment to demonstrate, and um, actually, we're only going to be able to show how this one is set up, and then we're going to show the, the information. But the question, as I mentioned earlier, is how can you tell? Uh, what kind of honey this is, or if you have a sample. Um, well, honey actually has a lot of different chemicals in it, and I think one of the themes that we've already been talking quite a bit is, well, did you realize that there's chemicals in honey? And at first when I say that to someone, they, they might be a little revolted. I don't want yeah. any chemicals in my honey, I right? I wouldn't think there would be. Well, what is it going to be if it isn't chemicals? Mm. It's going to be nothing. Yeah. There's not even air. Not, you know, everything around you is a chemical. So mostly honey is fructose and sucrose, two kinds of sugars, and those mixtures make it a liquid. Uh, but there's a lot of other very slight amounts of materials that actually give it an aroma that connoisseurs that are certainly well, much more sophisticated than me can tell, uh, maybe perhaps by tasting it or by smelling it, but I certainly can't. Honey, to me, just tastes like honey. Um, but it might be important to know if you're importing honey and it says that it's clover honey, is it really clover? Okay. So what we've got here is uh, a chemical way of analyzing it. Now, uh, it's going to be too small perhaps to see, but I'll hold this up just to show you now. 
Uh, this is an apparatus that's going to allow us to put a very small fiber into a vial of the honey. Okay. We don't want it to actually touch the honey because the honey is pretty sticky and that would ruin the fiber anyway. We just want that fiber to be exposed above the surface of the honey. Just like you would use your nose to smell the honey, you wouldn't put your nose into the honey, but sure. just get those vapors from above it. Actually, so, my kids would, but okay. that's it. Well, you know, the problem, but go ahead. <laughs> in any case, we, we don't want to sure. get the sticky honey on here, so we're going to put the fiber just above the uh, honey, and we're going to let it soak in okay. the vapors, which is the same things you would smell, and uh, we're going to call them different organic chemicals. That's what they are, organic okay. chemicals. Then we're going to take this back to our laboratory where we have an instrument where we can put that fiber back into the instrument and it can analyze all the chemicals that were stuck onto that fiber, even extremely small amounts. So one of the things that is just still incredible to me is that uh, the, the instrument that we have called a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer is so sensitive that really if you expose it to the wrong place, you're going to see all the wrong kinds of chemicals. You have to keep this sort of isolated until you're ready to use it. So the part we have to demonstrate um, is a called a hot plate stirrer. Okay. And, uh, and we have to move pretty quickly because we're getting to, to the right. end here. Very so. good. So, um, <laughs> Peter, if you could come in and just uh, if you could uh, just take uh, this vial and set it up there. So what Peter had done earlier is he weighed out a specific amount of the clover honey and put a little bit of water in it, and um, we also put a little stir bar in there, which is really just cool to see. It's a uh, a magnet coated with Teflon, and um, maybe not 225, Peter. Let's put it down to, because I, I don't want to. I don't want to boil the honey. Okay, so we're heating up that vial and we're spur stirring it, and then Peter also is going to prepare uh, to put in the fiber itself. So this is a whole apparatus. Go ahead and uh, lock it in there, and we're going to expose that fiber. This needs to be adjusted. A little okay, bit. how about like that? And yeah, it needs to come in just a little, right? Okay, so the fiber is enclosed inside a needle. Okay. So he's gonna first turn this uh, like a screw, so it's gonna poke the needle through. So I'm gonna, do me a favor. Sure. I want you to take us to the end of the experiment because we're almost out of time here, but I wanna get the punchline, so. I, I appreciate yes. that. In <laughs> fact, it's perfect time for that because all we're gonna do is expose that and then on the computer, and I hope you'll be able to see this, we have the results of the data. So we had already run this earlier. And those results show a variety of different chemicals that are present in this sample of honey. And by analyzing which ones are there, you can say perhaps this is clover honey or another kind of honey. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. Uh, as I, I told you before, this is the first time I've done this, and I really, really enjoyed this. I really want to have you guys come back uh, with more food. You bring food this time. Okay. <laughs> Not just to burn, but to eat. Okay? okay? And you can come back. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. That's our show for today. But the conversation continues online at wycc.org. We'll see you next time on The Professors.